Hi, I'm JB Bergen. I use the pronouns they, them. I'm a film photographer and I develop my own film. Uh, I usually do it in my kitchen sink and I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. All right, let's get started. You have your film developing tank. Let's take this apart. This basically acts as a light tight space for you to put the chemicals in and agitate the chemicals so that the film comes to life, as it were. It comes with two, the one that I have specifically, uh, which is called a Patterson tank, comes with two 35 millimeter sized rolls, but they can expand if you are shooting 110 or 120 millimeter film, they can expand and they fit into these little grooves. But for our purposes today, we're just developing 35 millimeter, so we're just gonna work with that. It's important to note that this entire process from opening the film up to securely putting it in the Patterson tank and closing the Patterson tank has to be done in complete darkness. The first step is you take a wine opener and you pry open the back of this bad Larry. Here we go. Oh God. See, it's coming up. Normally when you're done with your roll of film, this little tail of the film will already be inside because you have theoretically rolled up all the film into the canister. So what you do, some of the film, some film that I use is really easy to take this little thing off. Some of it is a little bit more difficult. You're done with your wine opener. Thank you. Then you push out the top. See how like the little top comes out? You push it out and this is your film. Again, this should be done in all darkness. This film is effectively ruined. Um, by me doing this because it's exposed to light. So what I do next is I let the film unfurl a little bit because from being so tightly wound in a camera and then rewound into the film cartridge, it naturally has a little bit of that sort of like wound up tightness, like a rubber band being snapped. So I kind of let it unroll in my hand, but keep it in a in like the shape of the roll. And you cut off this little tail. And again, you just guesstimate because you're doing it in complete darkness. You want to make sure that when you cut off the tail of the film, it's as flat as it can be because this is going to be, you're going to lead the top of this into the teeth of this film cartridge essentially. So at this point, you can let go of the rest of the film and just let it go where it pleases. It might snap up and just be, you know, like this. It might unroll if it's a little bit looser. And what you want to do is take the flat edge following the curve of the film and guide it into these teeth. This is a this definitely took a fair amount practice on my part, there are little ball bearings that you might be able to see that you want to guide them past. And it's really just a feeling thing that you have to feel out when you've pulled it far enough. I'd usually say a safe bet is about an inch and a half of the negative you want to pull. And then you start going back and forth in this motion. Every time, this is just a ritual for me, like a routine on my end, I always touch the film lightly once I've turned it a couple of times just to make sure that it's going in the right direction. At, because if you don't put enough of the film in, it can just uh, fall out. The less you touch the negative itself, the better. Um, I love the kind of errant mistakes that I make. What you're gonna do, is continue loading the film like this. This can be very easy or very frustrating, no matter how many times you've done it. Um, it's really a feeling thing. Like I, in the dark, I can feel the film cartridge get closer and closer to my wrist as it's being loaded in, which to me is always a good sign. Which to me is always a good sign. So I'm getting to the end of the film. It's almost loaded pretty much all the way there. And now, usually, and I'm doing this completely by feeling, when I feel that the film cartridge is, like the plastic part of the film cartridge, not the negative, is 
almost to the teeth of this film carrier, I grab my scissors again. Da, da, da. And I hold it carefully and I just cut that film, that plastic part off like this. Once that's done, I feel around a little bit to make sure that no piece of the negative is sticking out awkwardly. Um, I might do one more twist just for good measure. And then I put it on this thing. Normally I do two at a time for the sake of this video, I'm just doing one, but I'm not, you know, this film, as I said, I'm gonna stop talking now. your film is loaded in the developing tank, we're gonna develop the film. You use three chemicals, three different types of chemicals to develop the film. The first is the developer. What I'm doing right now is heating it up to a temperature of 102 degrees. I use a hot plate. You can also just use hot water running uh, from your faucet. Whichever way works, whichever way you figure out works best for you. This is the developer. This is what's called Blix. This essentially is what colorizes the film once the developer brings the negative onto the, onto the negative, essentially. This third chemical is the fixer. It's essentially what keeps the negative from deteriorating over time. It's kind of, it's a fixer. Like it, it you know, it fixes things. And it can be at room temperature. And that's the cool thing about it. You don't have to heat it up. The developer has to be at 102 degrees. The Blix can be between 95 and 105 degrees. It's important to keep the Blix and the developer separate. A couple drops of Blix can ruin a whole jar of developer and make it impossible to develop your film. So the Blix is done. It heats up faster. I'm no physicist. I think it's just because there's less. While we're waiting for the developer to heat up, I wanna tell you about my lab timer. This is an app. You can use any type of app you want or any type of timer. You just have to keep pretty consistent time with how you're developing. So what you do first is you soak the film. What you do first is you soak the film with water at 102 degrees for one minute. When that's done, you pour the developer in and soak it for three minutes and 31 seconds. After that, you pour the Blix in after pouring the developer out and soak it for six minutes and 30 seconds. I always give myself a couple extra seconds just to transfer over the chemicals in case anything weird goes on, that sort of thing. After the Blix, you wash it with water that's between 95 and 105 degrees for a minute, and then you put the fixer in for one more minute, and then you're done. It's ready. <laughs> All right, we're ready to go. My chemicals are heated up. My water is heated up. Let's start the timer. Some people at 30 seconds like to dump the water out to give the chemicals, to give the film like a fresh batch of water. I'm not one of those people, but no problem if you are. And this is a process that once you start it, you can't really stop. So just make sure you have everything ready before you start soaking the film. Dump all the water out. You can use a funnel to do this, or you can just pour it straight in. Put the lid on, start your timer. And when you have the chemicals, in the developing tank, you want to invert it like this so that the chemicals are hitting all of the negative equally. So you shake it around for 10, for 10 seconds and then every 30 seconds, you give it four inversions. So now the developer is done. So you put that aside, pour in the flicks. And I've had luck developing 20 rolls of film 
per batch of chemicals. And I've never really pushed it past that or done less. Um, so I usually use 20 as like my benchmark capacity. And after the first 10 seconds of inverting the developing tank with chemical in it, you want to invert it every 30 seconds after that. Oops. When I'm almost done with the blicks, I turn the water on and make sure it's at temperature, which is between 95 and 105. I usually get it around 100 degrees. Everybody's water temperature is different. The one in my house stays pretty consistent, so I don't necessarily have to worry about it. Um, I just like checking with the thermometer because it's only a minute, so it doesn't take, it's not, it's not a lifetime. Dump the water out. Now we're on the last step. For the fixer, you want to invert it for 15 seconds, and then you can just let it be. So I take apart the film holder, just pull it apart. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful piece of work. And then the film itself is still kind of sensitive. So you want to keep your hands on the edge of it. I always check it just to make sure that the photos came out. These are all photos of myself. Very cool. You can take photos of whatever you want. Yesterday, I just took photos of myself. Now that you have your film all nice and beautiful and developed, you want to hang it up. You can use a coat hanger. I just found these uh, and they're used for film. So I use them like little, just like a little fancy coat hanger. And you want to hang it up, let it dry. Do a very professional operation in here. You just let it dry. Once the film is dry, you can really do whatever you want with it. You can enlarge it. You can scan it in digitally, which is what I do with an Epson scanner, like a flatbed scanner. Um, or you can just look at it. Or you can just look at it. Or you can just look at it.